I just got finished watching Paul Blart Mall Cop once a day for a full week, and I've learned a lot in the process. I've learned a lot about the movie Paul Blart itself. I've learned about its star, Kevin James. I've learned about diabetes. diabetes. Um, but most importantly, I've learned a lot about myself. Paul Blart Mall Cop came out in 2009, and I remember specifically an instance where my aunt sat me down to watch it with her. Midway through the movie, I was so unimpressed and bored and apparently wearing all of that on my expressionless face. And so my aunt turns to me and she says, you know, it wouldn't kill you to laugh once or twice. And I didn't see it at the time, but now I think she was right. I'm here to give Paul Blart a chance. At the time, I wrote the movie off as a pretty basic fat guy fall down comedy, but this movie, for whatever reason, managed to be a box office smash, and it got rave reviews from people like famed critic Roger Ebert, who gave it three out of four stars, going as far as to say, should Daniel Craig someday retire, I am supporting Kevin James for the next James Bond. Although I had seen this movie before, uh, I didn't really remember anything about the plot or anything that happens within, so essentially I was going in blind, and I was pretty stoked about it. I mean, the DVD menu makes this look kind of intense. Well, actually, wait, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> The movie actually opens with a lot of promise. Paul Blart is a guy whose goal in life is to pass the physical at the police academy, a feat he's attempted seven times, I think it was, uh, but due to some large personal issues that he has, uh, he finds it a huge challenge to pass this test. And no, it has nothing to do with his physique, so don't ask. My man Paul here is fit as a fiddle. He just passes out if he hasn't eaten sugar in a while is all. This is a real condition that is related to diabetes that's called hypoglycemia. Well, that's why you always have to have sugar nearby. While doing research on the movie, I found a web page for diabetics that was dedicated to listing all the ways Paul Blart misrepresents hypoglycemia in an offensive fashion. I also found a change.org petition entitled Change the Name of Hypoglycemia to Paul Blart Disease. To fund his way of life in between failed police academy attempts, Paul Blart works as a security guard at the orange some shit I don't remember mall. There you go. That was like the least amount of help. You picked up a bag and handed it to a kid. That was not helpful. It was not that helpful. I still don't... Uh, there you go. What a good Samaritan. That's, that's Paul Blart. Good job. So the kid was upset that she wasn't holding the go. bag. Very, very confused about that interaction still. <laughs> There you go. I think that might be my least favorite shot in the entire movie. I don't know. I really hate that fucking shot. There you go. And there's a brand new security guard recruit who seems to be like a very shy but upstanding young man who also raises absolutely no suspicions at first glance. Confusing, right? So he's bad. He's evil, right? We all, we all figured out already that he's bad. Sporting a full beard. This part of the movie is probably the best part. It's Thank not you. outright hilarious, sure. but on viewing number one, you could tell that I was really excited and hopeful that the film would build on this decently funny momentum. All that comes to a screeching halt the moment Paul runs face first into a minivan. That's not supposed to be here. It's a minivan. minivan. This is when we're introduced to the love interest of the film, uh, whose name I definitely remember. Pam? Are you the guy that crashed into the- Minivan. I don't think so. Which one? That one. Somebody needs to fall over. Someone needs to fall over right now. Looking back on it, I kind of find it odd that a lot of the comedies I grew up watching featured prominent romantic storylines. Movies like Zoolander, Anchorman, Dodgeball, even Billy Madison all had get the girl energy, which is 
rarely funny, in my opinion. I mean, I'm sure that some people find the budding romance between P. Blitty and maybe Pam, uh, the steamiest romance they've ever seen on screen. So, you all set for the busiest shopping day of the year? And um, the worst day for a birthday. This year it falls on a Black Friday, which means I probably won't even get a card. Everyone's too busy shopping. People too busy shopping on Black Friday. I just kind of wish it wasn't there. I wish it was a straight up comedy. Anyway, the love triangle of this movie is made up of Paul Blart, a kind of down on his luck, bumbling, goofy guy. Pam, whose name is actually Amy, uh, she works at Unbelievable and has no other discernible characteristics. Amy? From Unbelievable? Yeah. And the third member is Stuart. I don't understand why you're laughing. I just called you fat. I'm not laughing. <laughs> He's kind of a bro douche stereotype, uh, and he also works as a pen salesman. <gasps> yes. The Summit 5280 Fountain. That's stunning. Yeah, I know. This guy isn't in the movie too much, but when he is, it's always at least mildly humorous. I'll give him that. <laughs> After charming Amy in front of her wig kiosk, Blart gets invited to a group dinner that all the mall workers are attending. It's kind of like a karaoke night, except there's only one guy singing, so I guess everybody is just kind of at this guy's karaoke concert. I don't really get it. I'm an MOP. Paul and Amy aren't quite in love at this point yet, but it's a clear opportunity for Blart to impress the girl of his dreams. So naturally, the first thing that he does after being harassed a bit by Stuart, of course. Well, I, I don't, I don't hit women, so yeah, just minivans, right? is to immediately, and without explanation, get into a very confusing nacho-eating contest. <laughs> yes, now I'm ready, okay. Um, go. Okay, so the two fattest guys in the room get into an eating contest. Yeah, classic. <laughs> this is not set up in any way. Nobody says the words nacho-eating contest. It's just cut to nacho. By the way, those nachos, I know I was dieting, but I was very hungry during this scene. I swallowed everything I got on those, and I, and I loved it. I was very happy with them. So Paul Blart accidentally gets wasted on margarita, and this is Paul Blart's greatest shame. He is a super annoying and super unconvincing drunk. Feel the nub. <laughs> Feel the nub. Feel the nub. He stumbles around and falls over, which is pretty great, admittedly. Kevin James actually fractured his nose in this guy's lap here, which is kind of hilarious. My hand on his head, right there. Then I go down, broken nose on the guy's thigh. Yep, right there, it's starting to swell up and I knew it. The entire point of the scene is that Blart makes a fool of himself in front of Amy. It just takes so long for it to happen, dude. <sighs> Uh, 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. So that's the end of that day. The rest of the movie takes place on Black Friday, where we first establish that blamey isn't going to be a thing. Pretty much everybody, you know, tends to write me off. I write you off, Paul. I don't think you can do shit. <laughs> I guess what I'm asking is that you don't. Write him off. Write him off. Write him off. And then Paul wanders off to play rock band for yet another musical montage. Let me tell you, there are a lot of montages in this movie, so be prepared to sit through a lot of shit happening to music. In this case, the shit that happens is that Santa's helpers are more like Satan's helpers, and they're here to take over the mall, baby. Everybody up! Oh God, uh-uh. <laughs> Oh no, so that's a much more shocking uh, visual uh, than it used to be. Luckily for them, there was no extra security presence at the mall on Black Friday. You might think there would be, uh, but it's just generally a very well-behaved mall. Things start to get extremely confusing at this point. We're entering the last phase of the movie, which is sort of a die-hard parody. 
Paul is inside trying to rescue the hostages from Vec, who, surprise, surprise, ended up being evil. But here's the craziest part. I'm the leader. Nah. There are also some cops outside of the mall who occasionally contact Paul via a radio or cell phone or something. We went to high school together. Remember? I set you on fire at the Pancake Festival. Paul Blart on fire at the Pancake Festival. I really hope that scene was filmed somewhere at some point. And the cell phone is like this whole other thing. There's this random guy who calls him and his titties are out and it's super confusing. I'll get to that in a, in a little bit later, though. Do not lie to me, Paul Blart. Do not lie to me. You are probably sexy feet. <laughs> the problem with this whole thing is that the evil guy's plan is just incomprehensible. Uh, un, 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 I've watched it seven times now, once with the DVD commentary where the producers are trying to explain this plan and I still don't 100% know what they're doing. This is the key to retrieve the codes from each store's credit card machine. They change every day, so make sure that you bring me back the codes for today. So the goal is credit card fraud? I still don't get it. So they're getting the codes to the credit card machine. And the plan is to, to get the credit card numbers and charge them all for a bunch of money? Or the plan is to hold the credit cards hostage? The main guy is holding hostages at a bank inside of the mall. Hey everyone, couple requests. You do all these things, well, you'll be back at home in no time. Back to your mediocre lives. You don't gotta be a dick about it. There, you gotta be a dick about it, dude. But instead of breaking into the bank's vault to get a lot of money, he's looking at his fingers. Meanwhile, his henchmen, who were all named after Santa's reindeer in a half-hearted attempt to make this a Christmas movie, are bringing him the numbers. The leader will then use these numbers to get a lot of money somehow. Considering all the luxury items that I have stacked up in my Amazon shopping cart, situation unacceptable. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, listen to them describe it on the DVD commentary for a second, and you can tell that even they don't know what's going on. Uh, the plot of this movie, endless. I guess it doesn't, nothing makes sense, really. It doesn't make sense. I, I'm still confused to this day. Well, what's funny? <laughs> the important part, I suppose, is that Vec needs these codes, and he gets very unhappy when there are no, no codes. codes. What happens is they have to do it when the mall's open so that all the credit card companies think the stores are still open. Then they go in, they put in a code to the credit card machines, which feels like... Just wake me up when you're done with this one. <laughs> See, already it's boring. Also, all of the people that work in the mall that we met at the bar scene are the ones that are the hostages. Blart's daughter, Maya, also joins them as a hostage when she just walks into the mall when all this is going on. She gets past a whole police barricade somehow and just waltzes right in. I don't know. Why can she get in and nobody sees her? And especially when Kier said, I want this mall locked down from the inside, all those bike chains. Well, she has a security pass, so I guess ah. it's a secret. But she gets by swatting everybody. Yeah, it's a secret. From here on out, the rest of the movie is just Paul Blart going around and assassinating the henchmen. Like, he straight up kills this dude here. I mean, he's Paul Blart straight up murders a guy and then cooks the corpse. That's pretty badass, even if it was it's also, also very lame. There's a lot of back and forths, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. Points where you think Paul is really gonna get him this time, but no, he fucks it up. Oh, here goes Paul. He's about to do something really cool. Oh, wait, no, that's not possible. Oh, I wish I had a bat. I would bust you up and see how much candy fell out. Wow. It's like they were just trying to stuff as many twists and turns as possible in here. There's this whole guy, Commander Kent. I'm Commander Kent. 
I'm Commander Cunt! And he doesn't do anything this entire movie. He's like the leader of the SWAT team that show up and do absolutely nothing. And he's just there so at the end he can be like, Hey, guess what? I'm a bad guy too. Oh, very impressive. Taking down an assailant without a gun. I hope you don't mind if I use one. This is so fucking stupid. And then he gets shot. And since everybody thinks this was a bank <laughs> So how does Paul save the mall exactly? Uh, I can remember this. G give me a second. He definitely blows up a rainforest cafe. One thing I know is Paul Blart is not a badass. And he definitely drives a van through a building. How did he get the keys to the... Never mind. Never mind. And then he goes on a chase. I remember that for sure because he totally biffs it jumping off a van. No! <gasps> That's the thing. You would expect that at some point Paul Blart becomes competent. And there's even a moment where he changes into a darker outfit and he gets a nice looking tan and looks all action hero-y. But he never gets it together. Hey, you. Scuba dooby doo. Even at the very end, where he's got the bad guy, Commander Cut shows up and then gets shot by not Paul Blart, but this old guy. He doesn't really do anything that heroic, I don't think. Like, he bonks a few guys on the heads, he's got some cool moves, but at the end of the day, all of his plans to help out fall short. There's a moment in the movie where Vec is ranting about what a failure Blart is. I mean, you can't pass the trooper exam. You, uh, you, you black out if you don't have a Snickers bar like every 20 minutes. You had the chance to be the MVP and, ooh, you blew it. And, I mean, he's n not wrong, really. And how does Paul Blart respond to this tongue lashing? Well, by making a one in a million shot with hot sauce right into Vec's eyeball. And then he just, inexplicably squanders the opportunity by just standing there like an idiot. Come on! Ah! Go get him! Go, Dad. What, this is the most frustrating part of the movie, I think. Okay, no, this may be the worst part of the movie. God, worst part of the movie. Worst part of the movie. Probably should have capitalized on that. And even though Paul isn't the one who pulled the trigger, he is the one that gets the girl once the day is saved because the actual guy who saved the day is just way too old and gross. So that's the general outline of the movie, more or less, but there's oh so much more to talk about. Is the movie good? Is the movie bad? Is the movie worth watching seven times in a row? These are the questions that I'm here to answer. Let's start with the positives. Paul Blart is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. At times I found it entertaining and it did make me laugh. It just fills the cracks of the heart. <laughs> Obviously I laughed the most when I first watched it and then I got diminishing returns from there. Uh, but there were still a couple of jokes that got me almost every single time. Like when Paul goes through the window. <laughs> or then there's that other hilarious time when he murders that dog. <laughs> the setting of a mall is also just a great place to set a movie. Everybody loves the mall, or at least kind of likes the idea of one. Uh, problems arise when you try and set this movie around Christmas time, when every store in the mall is advertising their summer sales, but I guess that's just not something the average moviegoer will notice. But ultimately, I love the idea of Paul Blart. He's a fun character who does have his moments. The mind is the only weapon that doesn't need a holster. I love the idea. I really want to love Paul Blart, uh, but I don't. So let's discuss that. First off, it's just not funny enough, in my opinion. And that's not to say that it's never funny, but the problem is that there's not enough time for jokes because we're too busy either listening to montages, more music? Is this a fucking musical? Or there's a romance plot going on that I have to imagine nobody cares about. 
You're gonna get a Paul Blart OST and think that it's gonna be goofy mall shenanigan music. It's all gonna be romantic ballads. You're like, what? What movie was this? Wasn't this just Kevin James falling down for an hour and a half? I mean, we don't know anything about Paul Blart other than that he passes out when he doesn't have enough candy. You see, alcohol instantly turns to sugar in the blood, and what happens is the capillaries. And that he is a single parent whose wife left when she got her green card. We did have some good times back when she was still trying to trick me. <laughs> he's a funny character, but he's not gonna be able to pull at my heartstrings. So, like, why, why would I care if he finds love? I just don't care if he finds love. I would be totally fine if Paul Blart was alone. In fact, I hope he's alone in the sequel. I hope in the first five minutes of the sequel, they're like, that that girl, she's gone. Actually, she sucked. That time would have been much better spent going store to store and breaking up 100% believable fights between 100% believable women. I found it first. No, you didn't. Ladies, problem. She's trying to take the last push-up bra on this size. We need two ladies fighting in a store, right? What would two ladies be fighting over at the mall? Hmm? Push-up bra, definitely, definitely. Well, I need this one now. I have a date tonight. There's only one push-up bra left in the store. <laughs> Between that and the confusing action movie plot points, which... <laughs> It may seem like I talked a lot about those, but I mean, I really glossed over them. There's so many plot holes. Like why was one of their first moves to destroy all of the security equipment that they could have used for their plan? Never mind. Never mind. Point is, I spent a lot of time during the movie either bored or confused or both. So many times I was just begging for someone to like fall over or something. Just give me something to laugh at, please. Too boring to be a comedy, too bland to be a romance. The action, you know, it can be pretty good. I'll give it that. One elevator sequence in particular is really great, but I wouldn't call it an action movie. At the end of the day, it feels like a movie without an identity. Even the box doesn't know what to call it. It's not claiming to be hilarious or action packed. It's just a movie about a mall cop. I will say though, that if you do end up watching this movie enough times to have regular complaints about it, you should check out the DVD commentary because it's hilarious. Kevin James roasts this movie, man. He complains about the same things that I do. Uh, honestly, it just makes him sound funnier than I'd give him credit for after watching Paul Blart. This is the shortest chase in history. It right used here. to be a lot, lot longer. Yeah, watch. Oh, I'm through a door and I'm safe. Okay. The phone guy. I promised I'd talk about the phone guy, but I ran out of time. Look, he's a phone guy. He calls the phone. Is that helpful? That enough information? Peanut blart and jelly. What, what, what? What's up, man? So good to hear your voice. Yeah, it's good to hear your voice too, Pahoot. Paul Blart Mall Cop earned $183.8 million at the box office against a $26 million budget. It got a sequel movie, which I'm sure is interesting. And uh, Paul Blart hasn't been up to much since then, but I bet my money that the character gets revived at some point. And when they do reboot this franchise in 2030 with AI Kevin James, I hope this video is factored into the algorithm that writes the script. I think it would make for a much better Paul Blart 3 if my opinions were taken into account. All right, brand deal time. It's time for the brand. It should be starting any second now. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Hey there, best friends. Flavor is in full bloom at HelloFresh, and I, for one, am gonna yell about it. Ah! HelloFresh sends chef-crafted recipes with fresh ingredients right to your door or left at your door. The weather is starting to look better these days, so when the spring sunshine is calling your name, just look up to the sky and say, screw you, dude. I'm staying inside and eating my HelloFresh in the darkness like the elders foretold long ago. Hosting a get together sometime soon? We'll stop bragging about your active social life and start browsing the HelloFresh market for appetizers, snacks, sides, and more. 
They've got everything you could want to bring to a party, except for the friends. Friends are not included, but you could order enough food for 10 people and eat it all yourself if you want. And hey, Buster Buddy Boy, don't worry if you're not a pro in the kitchen. The recipes they send are easy enough for even you to follow. I know, crazy! So go to HelloFresh.com and use code BRUTALMOOSE16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com, code BRUTALMOOSE16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping.